Okay, this is case number 651, a case that I did on tooth number 18. You look at the PA here, you can see there's some, some uh, infection and some bone loss. You look at the sagittal view of the CBCT, you can see there's massive bone loss, suspecting a fracture. On the coronal view, you can actually see the fracture in the occlusal area. And on the axial view, I looks possibly that distal root, maybe that's fractured or, or if that's just a, um, an artifact. Long root, long, it had long uh, roots. He wanted me to try to save it, even though he had a uh, buccal abscess going on, buccal swelling. I went ahead and shaped it up to Pro Taper Gold F2 and then decided to go bigger on the on the apical third and shaped up Vortex Blue to a 35, all the canals. I then used the Photona Sweeps laser and I ended up doing nine cycles of sweeps with 7.5% sodium hypochlorite. That's a lot of cycles, but I figured I'd try it to see how well it would clean it out. I did the finer, final protocol using two 30-second two, uh, sweep cycles of 17% EDTA, and then I dialed it back and finished that protocol. So I think, think it should have an interesting result. I received the specimen from Reed uh, in formalin, and is our method. Uh, I took the roots, separated the distal and mesial parts, then section them sagittally, each root separately. This is what the root looked like before it was sectioned. And then the uh, these are my radiographs before uh, separating the roots. So that they look to be very well shaped out. Uh, pretty nice anatomy. This is the mesial root uh, section sagittally. So you can see there's quite a bit of pulp tissue uh, still in the root. And this is what the mesial root looked like uh, when it was completely dehydrated. The dehydration um, precipitates all the proteins. Now let's look at the distal root uh, first uh, under the SEM. This is the dehydrated and undehydrated uh, distal root. And when you look at them, you can see the soft tissue uh, condenses and precipitates uh, on the surface. And then when you look at it, uh, with uh, when you go into the site and actually uh, bring up some of the imaging, um, we did some stitched imaging here as well as some collages. And uh, I've started to put the wet specimen and dried specimen in so you can see them and correlate the two areas. And when you look at the uh, areas, they look uh, very well cleaned. Um, almost all of the pre-dentin has, has been removed and we're right down on the mineralization front. And you can see uh, quite a bit of the mineralization front has started to be demineralized. And here we are uh, at the terminal uh, area. And as usual, there's quite a bit of tissue still uh, at the terminus. Uh, and I see no evidence anywhere of uh, any bacterial morphotypes. Uh, you see areas where the predentin has been pretty much removed and other areas where it hasn't been completely removed. And you'll see evidence of some dentinal tubules. Uh, that have been fairly well demineralized. This is an area further up near where the soft tissue was. And here you see it's kind of caked on uh, right above the mineralized surface. And even below that area, you can see there's been considerable demineralization of the mineralized front. And again, occasionally you'll see what looks to be uh, like some actino, uh bacteria, but you have to look really hard to see any evidence of any bacteria morphotypes at all. Now looking at the mesial root, uh, where there was more tissue in the, the apical area, Uh, you can see the fibrous nature uh, of that pulpal tissue. And this is the longest stitch that I've done. It took about an hour to do this stitching. And uh, you get kind of the classic laser-like 
a look to it where there's just, uh, it looks like a tornado has gone off or a hurricane. And um, a lot of demineralization and chunks of, of pre-dentin present, as well as, of course, there's some echinocytes uh, that we've found from uh, the earlier Triton cases. So it's worthwhile spending some time in going through these stitched uh, images. And maybe you'll see things that uh, I, I don't see in this particular area on the mesial root when you go into the soft tissue. Um, you can see what I thought initially were maybe yeast, but these are too small to be yeast and you have kind of a standard uh, actinomycetes type of impregnation of that tissue. So overall, a very interesting case. I'd be interested in your comments.